what's going on everybody this is john jake gaming on for my cure coming at you with a brand new episode of the bluffton tank dynasty here on ea college football 25 our team builder squad was on the verge of going to a bowl game for the very first time in school history last season but fell just short this season we come out here and we try to get ourselves to a bowl game for a, our very first time in school history and it starts with our opener on the road as we take on the raging cajuns of louisiana who we played in our very first game of this series and we ended up falling at the tech center when the raging cajuns pulled away in the second half this time we come in into their place but with that being said our team is significantly better so much we actually do have a better football team uh than the raging cajuns where we're an 81 overall whereas louisiana is an 80 and we're very excited to see what's going on and see if we can start this season out one and oh here in year number three but before we get into the gameplay, we are having the huge opportunity of introducing the new players that are on this squad that have become custom players. Uh, guys that you submitted in either in the previous episode or through other means like the Discord and the channel membership program, both of which are linked down in my description. And you don't necessarily need to join either in order to support my channel. But if you want to support me in a more personal way, those two options are certainly out there now i have a pair of 69 overall wide receivers that have become custom players one of which is jason cutler now jason cutler is a physical receiver from pickerington ohio and he's actually the cousin of justin credible just incredible already on this roster but was redshirted this past season uh because he didn't really get to see the field and then joe tyrese is another player that's joined in this squad he's from Chardon, ohio joe tyrese is a fiscal specimen at six foot five gotta work on his hands a little bit but he's physical and he's absolutely fast as well and then on the defensive side of the ball, I do have a couple of guys that are on this defensive side of the ball as well. Chase Gentry is going to join this safety room as he is a freshman out of Akron. Uh, could be a starter for us one day uh, while we have Stephen Brantz and Porter Lindstrid in front of them. But we also brought in another strong safety in Garrett Seabrook. He's from Tallahassee, Florida. Comes as a solid 67 overall. And Garrett Seabrook comes in as one of those viable options uh, at the safety position if both Porter Lindstrid and Stephen Brantz end up getting hurt. But the biggest reason why I wanted to play this game in particular against Louisiana Lafayette is because one of our players that entered the transfer portal this past offseason did go to Louisiana uh, through the transfer portal. And so if a senior is on this depth chart, it's probably going to be a rotational piece as he's going to be behind both Fitzgerald West Jr. as well as Ashley Williams Jr. on the depth chart. Uh, but Alan McCurry uh, gets to return back closer to home. But I want to prove out here in this particular game that he made the wrong de decision and should have stayed with an up-and-coming program like the Bluffton Techs fighting Muskrats. And so we come out here in our very first game of the season looking to start 1-0. So should be a very exciting episode, one that I hope you guys thoroughly enjoy as we try to come out here and start winning our very first season opener we're 0 and 2 in season openers right now we're gonna change that here but hope you guys are excited for this video man if you are make sure you go ahead smack that like button hit that subscribe button as well if you do happen to be brand new to the channel and with that being said let's go ahead and hop right into the action louisiana home to the raging cajuns of the university of louisiana and the site of the clash we have in store for you today Maybe you need a little caffeine, or maybe the sheer energy of this matchup will keep you wide awake as we know anything can happen when you kick off after dark. As we'll see a squad from the back, a crew looking to make a statement, taking on a team from the Sunbelt, the Louisiana Raging Cajun. 
All right, boys, so not only our first game of the season, but also our first possession of the season as well as we'll go ahead and get things squared away. First play is going to go to our tailback, Will Peoples, as the junior running back is going to be able to pick up a solid set of yards there for us. A six-yard gain on the play. This is going to set us up with a second and four. Where DJ Armstrong's first pass of the game day goes over the middle to Chris Gentry. That's that superstar receiver, man. He had some big plays in his sophomore year. And we're getting him involved early in this one. Able to pick up the first down and picking up another first down here with Will Peoples on the ground as well. We are putting together a really commanding possession. As now we are in Louisiana raging Cajun territory. Going into what we got going on here, man, with this uh, no huddle offense. Looking around, going to try to throw it deep. Looking for our man, Javante Moore, down the sideline. But it's going to be broken up at the last second, though. And eventually it leads to a third and ten. As Armstrong in the shotgun, dropping back. He's got some time initially, but has to get rid of it as pressure gets to our senior quarterback and so that being said we had to punt the ball away but good news for us though Louisiana does end up going free and out so we do have the ball back in our hands once again so we'll try to go back at it here we had some positive things happen for us in that first possession of ours but still trying to make something shake here in terms of having actual production Unless we can do something here on this third and 21. Could be in for a long day. But we find our tight end, Nas Lilia, who we kept at that tight end position. And we are happy that we did in that instance. Because tight ends, they usually get matched up on a linebacker. And because they usually get matched up on a linebacker, he is a constant mismatch. Regardless of how you shake it out, this man is also going to be a mismatch. Chris Gentry down the sideline. And that man is going to be gone like a girl in a country song. Touchdown, Bluffton Tank. And the Fighting Muskrats are going to strike first. They will take a 7 to nothing lead. And that's how we get things going here on the road in Louisiana Lafayette. As now we have a 7 nothing lead. Now we can certainly start and enjoy a little bit. But now we need our defense to stand tall. Defense has been off to a hot start so far. Haven't seen Louisiana find much of a rhythm yet offensively. We'll see if that continue as the Raging Cajuns will throw over to the right hand side. And that will quickly be completed. As that will go for the first down. It will extend the drive for the Raging Cajuns. However, they need another first down. And this time their quarterback's going to step up in the pocket. And it's going to scramble right down the middle. That's Devin Cooks, the sophomore quarterback, starting for the Raging Cajuns here today. Able to use his feet to extend the drive. And speaking of those feet, they are going to use that running game once again. The gash us for yet another first down. That's Trey Hawley, who's able to move the sticks for Raging Cajuns. Meanwhile, a couple of plays later, we see them dealing with yet another third and five. And look at this. Our defense is able to get home. John Decker, the fourth, able to bring that blistering pressure as we get into the end of his first quarter of action. As John Decker, the fourth, is going to effectively end this drive for the Raging Cages and also end this first quarter where, you know, kind of a feeling out process, kind of a back and forth, but... Averaging 12 yards a game, uh, a play here, uh, we could be having a huge takeoff moment, but that's not necessarily what happens here. Starting the second quarter, we find ourselves struggling a little bit offensively, and so that being said, Raging Cadence are going to uh, eventually get a first down. That's the first first down of the second quarter after both of us kind of traded punts in that second quarter specifically. So yeah, man, that being said, we are got ourselves in the danger zone for the first time this evening as they're going to go with a play action, looking down the right-hand side, and it's incomplete. Oh, Dennis Cooks, he had a wide but naked open man. Nash Berte was fooled on the play action and just overthrew him. We are deeply fortunate there 
but that was not a touchdown. And at least our defense can go ahead and continue to fight for yet another day. As now third and short as the Raging Cajuns get into the gets the represents the first red zone opportunity for either team uh, here uh, in this very first game of the season. As Trey Holly will take the carry and you know he had to get some tough yards, but he managed to pick him up as that's a first down for the Raging Cajuns. As they'll now get inside the 15 yard line here, first and ten, throwing over the middle. He's gonna find his receiver for first down is. Malik Moon had a little bit of help bringing him down as Nash Burte, I believe, helped finish that tackle up. But now staring down first and goal from the free yard line. It's play action, looking to the left-hand side, but it's going to be well covered. Uh, Malik Moon was generally there on the coverage. They're going to be staring down a second and goal from the free yard line. So, very next play, and this time they're gonna keep it simple, running it on the ground, and Trey Holly, he's gonna get untouched into the end zone, and that's gonna represent the first touchdown of the Raging Cajuns here in this 2026 season, AKA season number three. And after they make this extra point, it's gonna be all knotted up here, all tied at seven apiece. So here we are midway through the second quarter. We're playing fine, but would like to get some more points on the board here soon. Thought we were going to have something there uh, in our guy, Will Peoples. But Will Peoples was just simply not looking for the ball necessarily. But we do notice on this third and long that they are pressing us down the sidelines. And you got to do that at your own risk. Because we're going to fire downfield. And it's caught by Javon Moore. Except there is a penalty. The penalty is going to be on our offensive line. It's the sophomore, Andrew Spanway. And penalty's been a little bit of an issue for us today. That's already our third penalty here in this first half. So we'll have to try it again here on a third and 23. And this time we have someone open on the other side. It's Chris Gentry down the sideline. He's gonna pull away and find the end zone. Touchdown, fighting muskrats. And Bluffton Deck is going to retake the lead, courtesy of the junior, Chris Gentry. And he put those afterburners on for sure. So now we are looking at 14 to seven, your score midway through the second quarter. And we're gonna get a big time interception. First play for our defense. That's Vladdy Koleskny, who was with this team since day one. And Koleskny is officially going to go ahead and lock things down, man. You absolutely love to see it. And a huge opportunity now to extend this lead even further. Because we're going to start this drive out inside the 30-yard line. Let's see what they do with it. So now, first and ten after the turnover, as we're going to throw it out to the side for Jared J.D. Weeks is located. He's going to be able to get a good block from Chris Gentry, bringing that open space and picking up the first down. As now, we're going to go tempo here, try to get Louisiana off balance, dropping back, looking over to the left-hand side. This time, it's Will Peoples who gets out of bounds. Picks up a solid set of yards there, but... After a short loss, we end up now in a third and long. Trying to pick up the sticks here. Trying to pull a fast one on the halfback draw. And it simply does not go anywhere. For the very first time this season, Tommy White's going to come out for the field goal attempt. So it looks like the kick could be good, but it bounces off the upright. Not great aim. I, I don't know why he's doing the LeBron salute. No idea what's going on there. But with that being said, huge opportunity for us to come out here and have a two-possession lead. And I'm not going to lie to you, man. We fumbled it back there. You hate to see it. So less than three minutes left here in this first half. Still only up by seven. As they're going to try to throw over to the right-hand side and get it past the linebackers. Uh, you know, Nash Burte is not a slow guy by any means. But, I mean, wide receivers are still kind of difficult to cover. And that kind of showed itself there. And that's for any linebacker, not just saying that specifically uh, for Nash Burte. So the Raging Cajuns putting together a little bit of a drive here 
as the Raging Cajuns will get across midfield as they're trying to put some more points up on the board before we go into the halftime locker room. Is that oh, 138 left? Gonna throw again on the drag pattern. We got some space. Is gonna get away from a few defenders. And finally, a gang of Bluffton Tech guys are gonna be able to bring him down. And thankfully, gonna get a little bit of help from the refs here. They're gonna bring it back a notch. As now it's gonna be first and 20 because of the holding penalty. But that doesn't go anywhere either. That uh, could have been just uh, like trying to set up something, trying to get to the outlet. Good pressure in order to force an incompletion. As now it's going to be second and 20. As now they're going to drop back. Look over to the left hand side and somehow hanging on to it. I don't know how that man made that catch there. Should be considering himself very fortunate here. As now, Ferdinand Inches going to try to send the blitz. Can Nash Berte make a play? Yes, he does. And Nash Berte is going to bring him down. As that will bring us into halftime, actually. We just took the ball and took it into halftime. We have a 14-7 lead and a big reason for our lead right now. It's definitely our junior wide receiver. He's been busting them deep. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this second half of action here as we'll go ahead and get the party started uh, with the Raging Cajuns getting the ball first. Nash Berte uh, completing the tackle is Malik Moon was just trying to play deep, did not want to get uh, like crushed there, but could have had some trouble there on the slant. Uh, that ended up being called on the RPO, but very next play, forcing some pressure, and that was nearly intercepted. That's Draymond Gates there, uh, one of the backup linebackers that did not play very much last year. Uh, he's going to have a little bit more playing time here in year number three. And uh, that almost ended the drive. Hopefully that's not going to haunt us later down the line as Porter Winstrey is in the area, but can't get over in time. And that dropped interception is going to haunt us as that is a moonshot in the bayou sky in the end zone it's a touchdown for the raging cajuns so now all knotted up here at 14 apiece as bluffton tech could not respond matter of fact we did actually go free and out so uh, for the first time today we could see louisiana possibly take the lead here uh, as we continue to progress through the second half is now second and short coming up holly in the backfield it's gonna know he was used as a decoy they use the RPO instead as Dennis Cook's going to completely throw that ball out to the right-hand side and move the sticks. But can he move the sticks again on a third and six? We are trying to make a tackle in the open field, and Malik Moon is going to be able to finish it off. And very curious to see what they end up doing. They don't end up going for it. Uh, so with that being said, uh, we do have the ball right back in our hands yet again. And we had someone open on that slot fade. Just couldn't get the pressure. If it wasn't for Paris Ast Ash right there, uh, we could be talking about big play there. Uh, trying to throw to our tight end, Scott McCaller, who's been pretty quiet here uh, so far in this ball game. Uh, but that slot fade, though, I'll tell you what, that slot fade, that might be a play that we might have to get back into later on because it was definitely open. Uh, we'll have to dig into that particular play later. Now, with that being said, first and 10 coming up is Will Peebles is going to try to run it down to the left-hand side and is going to be able to find some great blocks. Beautiful job there on the scheme uh, to pick up the first down. And then J.D. Weeks, he's uh, starting to get a little bit more action. He was elevated, uh, able to win that RP2 job uh, over uh, the fullback that we were uh, using last year, uh, John Ross. But instead, we got Will Peoples and J.D. Weeks in the backfield. Comp J.D. Weeks is that change of pace. You know, could be more that home run guy. So now, with that being said, let's see if we can get some points on the board since the first time in almost a, a full quarter of actual gameplay. This might be the one right here. As Nez Luya is going to find the end zone. Touchdown, Bluffton Tech. And Naz Luya is going to be able to find open space. And he's going to find the end zone for the touchdown. Able to get uh, the lead back for the Bluffton Tech finding Muskrats. 
and also in addition to that we were able to go ahead and we were able to make some uh some big plays defensively this is another big play for chris gentry and he's just a bad man he's a ridiculously bad man with bad intentions that's his third touchdown today that's his third chris gentry showing once again one of the best receivers at the group of five level at the very least could be one of the best receivers in america man i don't know what to tell you but going into the fourth quarter dj armstrong playing beautiful football here four touchdowns no interceptions we'll see if that continues as we now get into this final quarter of action taking this 28 to 14 leads we once again hold louisiana to a free and out there's chris gentry he's already got three touchdowns today could he make it four down the sidelines just gonna take it out of bounds not gonna risk hurting himself he's definitely an extremely important part of our team but look at his field position starting out inside the 26 yard line like we are doing incredible work here let's see if we can put this louisiana team away here put that dagger uh in their backside as we'll go ahead and get set up here four wide set but we do have will peoples in the backfield second and four armstrong looking over the middle he's got an open receiver and it's javon moore who's able to win that wide receiver two job and let's see if we can find javon moore once again and sure enough we do in the end zone touchdown bluffton tank it's another one for javon moore who's been a certified yo certified surprise actually um did not expect him to win the wide receiver two job in the spring but javon moore showing why he was able to impress the coaching staff and now we have a convincing lead right now 35 to 14 but this is college football some really crazy shit has happened uh, you, you would know this playing this game, and you would absolutely know this too. Um, knowing that, hey, uh, we've seen some crazy stuff in real life, you know, early on in the college football season. So, no rest for the weary at all. But we do get a sack from Cade Bloom, so that could help us out tremendously. As uh, Nash Berte, you know, had to clear out to guard that uh, pivot route, and uh, we got crushed there. Uh, so, Louisiana gets a big gain out of that. So now, second and eight coming up, looking over to the right hand side, and it's going to be deflected away. That is Darian Gates laying the lumber there, who almost had the interception earlier. And now it's third and eight instead, looking over to the left hand side, but Randall Glenn can't make the tackle. And it just barely, and I mean barely, moves the sticks. That should have been a tackle made in the open field. Could have been looking at a fourth and short. So now Louisiana is on a drive. They got them biscuits out as they are going to run it up the middle for another first down. Nash Berte with a couple of other Bluffton Tech guys going in and making the tackle there. But time is on our side. I'm surprised that they're not playing with more of a uh, more of an urgency uh still running their offense how they typically would which again is you know really just surprising to me that we see that uh just because of the fact that um we know what they're uh, trying to do right but that being said uh gonna throw over to left hand side and that's gonna be caught and that's going to be a touchdown so dennis is gonna throw his I believe third touchdown pass of the no actually it's just the second touchdown pass of the day still a good performance that we've been witnessing uh for sure for the raging cajuns quarterback particularly for raji dennis who gets his second touchdown of the day as well and we end up going free and out on our next possession as well so if the Raisin Cajuns can come out here and score on their next possession, uh, things could get very interesting very quickly here. So, um, definitely st still have a favorable chance to win if the Raisin Cajuns score another touchdown, but I just simply don't want to take that risk, man. I just want to end this game right here on this drive so that we can just uh, relax maybe a little bit here. Is now second and ten coming up, dropping back. Looks to the right hand side. It's going to be able to dump it off. Got the tight end out in the flat as Porter Winstrid and Draymond Gates 
uh, comes out and uh, makes a combination tackle there. Uh, but the Raging Cajuns do pick up that first down. It's now inside the 35-yard line. Looking again over to the left-hand side. It is completed. As that's Raji Dennis yet again, who's been having these big plays. He's been a certified baller for the Raging Cajuns in what could be a losing effort. We'll see if they go back to him again. He's got plenty of time in the pocket. Fires over the middle, and they do. They actually do go to Raji Dennis once again. Final play of the two-minute warning where they will dump it off to the tailback into the end zone. And all of a sudden, boys, this Raging Cajun team is right back into the game. All of a sudden, Trey Holly able to make that particular catch. And because we end up going free and out, we have to rely on our defense that has given up touchdowns on the last two drives. Can they make one critical play? Can they make it happen? Second and 14, dropping back. Looking over to the left-hand side. It's going to be dumped off. And it looks like it's going to be Malik Moon that makes the play. He's now our top corner on the depth chart and certainly acting like it. So let's see if we can make some big plays here on third and nine. Looking around, trying to make something shake here as Glenn tries to make the tackle. But Malik Moon finishes up. But wait a minute here. Was this illegal touching? And yes, it is. So it doesn't even matter. It's going to be 4th and 9 anyways. The completion does not count. And it all comes down to this one play. 4th and 9. Dropping back. Looking to the right hand side. It's intercepted. It's intercepted. Porter Winstrid. The year one custom is going to pick this pass off, baby. Let's go. You'll love to see it, baby. And you'll love to see us cruise to a season opening victory for the very first time and uh knowing Ali McCrary it feels like he wasn't a big impact and we showed him as well as his Louisiana team and we're just a different squad here in year number three all right boys so this ended up turning into an extraordinarily huge game for us here man we end up winning our first season opener in Bluffton Tank history and you take a look at some of these stats here between us and the Raging Cajuns we, this was a very competitive game for for the both of us right uh but what it really came down to here at the end of the day is that we just took better care of the ball we forced the Raging Cajuns to throw two interceptions while as we were actually extremely clean with the ball those little things were the difference and even though we definitely need to clean up the penalties man I'm not gonna lie to you there I thought we played a pretty well and definitely well enough to win here in season number three. And a big reason why we were doing so well in the game is that DJ Armstrong, he actually took extremely good care of the ball. 15 for 24, five touchdown passes he threw for 354 yards, uh, with his longest being an 89 yarder. And again, those zero interceptions, those zero turnovers, you absolutely love to see them. In the ground game, though, we did end up seeing Will Peoples nearly have 100 yards on the ground, while J.D. Weeks, who gets his first carries in a little bit, uh, he actually ends up with, with six yards a carry himself. And uh, while we did end up seeing uh, DJ Armstrong with negative yards uh, on the day, uh, at the same time, though, hey, at least we're able to at least get some semblance of a running game. Uh, we were pretty cons consistent from that front. But we all know who the player of the game needs to be. And the player of the game absolutely needs to be Chris Gentry, who quickly is showing that he is a superstar, at least in the group of five. Four catches, 233 yards, and three touchdowns as well. Had a couple of drops, but that's okay. Uh, Nas Willia did have a couple of drops himself, but he did end up catching a ball. And then Javon Moore, our junior receiver, ends up with three catches, 31 yards, and a touchdown himself. With a few other guys getting involved in the offense. Now, with the exception of the last couple of drives, I thought we played extremely well defensively. Nas Berte led the team in tackles today with 12 total tackles, followed by Malik Moon with 11 in the ball game. We did manage to get some pressure. That was something that I really wanted from last year's team is having that more consistent pressure. 
We got free sacks today, so I think that's a good start. K. Bloom, Ellis Berry, and John Decker the fourth uh, all ended with free sacks in the ball game. So consistent pressure definitely being applied today, and that does lead to a couple of turnovers that were forced. The junior corner out of Fort Lauderdale was able to get an interception, and so did our junior safety, Porter Lindstrade, uh, who was able to take that joint 19 yards, uh, so very good on the defensive side of the ball. Now, Ali McCrary, this is the first time that he does get to see this Bluffton Tech team since transferring away from the program, but Ali McCrary... I don't think even saw the field to be honest with you at least did not record any uh, statistics of any kind not sure if he actually saw the field or not making him rethink his decision to actually uh, going to Louisiana where he actually was getting semi consistent playing time but hey that's his decision now after the the advancing of the week we do end up noticing that chris gentry actually does get named mac offensive player of the week and when you're putting up over 200 yards of total offense i am not surprised uh that that was a thing so chris gentry does get named offensive player of the week but somehow he doesn't get named national player of the week so i'm really curious now who ends up being national player of the week and offensively it's going to go to jordan bridgewater the wide receiver out of ucf and i can see, i guess i can see where they're coming from four total touchdowns he had over 150 yards but i felt like chris gentry definitely felt like he got robbed here i think he personally should have been made offensive player of the week at the ncaa level as well but we will certainly accept the fact that we are going to be coming into our first conference game 1-0 and we're going to be looking to remain undefeated as we continue to progress through season number three. So next episode, we will be finding ourselves on the road taking on Northern Illinois as we begin our conference play for the very first time and starting it pretty early. Good win. Good win. But definitely have some things that we need to work on. It wasn't perfect. So my goal here is just continue to get better every single time. And hopefully that means that you guys enjoyed this video as well. This was a very exciting affair between us and Louisiana. And now we keep it rolling. If you enjoyed this video, man, make sure you go ahead and smack the like button. Hit that subscribe button as well if you do have to be brand new to the channel. This is John J Gaming on the mic signing off. But hope you guys are all out there having a good one. Take care, everybody.